What's up everybody? Lynn Ray here. I'm just getting home right now. It's uh, 9.30 in the morning. Just finished running some errands. Check this crap out. It's still snowing outside. It's April. Why is it still snowing? All right, day number three, learn to code. Check this intro out. What is up guys? I am back, Lynn Ray here. Uh, today we're gonna go over day number three of my learning to code series. At this moment, I am learning CSS and HTML. So, as I said in my other video, the last video, I like to work in 25 minute increments. Um, today I am going to try to get in about maybe three hours of studying today or three hours of work today. Uh, and also that that includes you know doing this this uh, here you know the Code Academy and also working on my personal website. Uh, but uh, I've got an appointment in about an hour, so I'll probably do about 25 minutes now, and then I will come back later on and do all that stuff. All right, so let's get back to work here. All right, specificity. Specificity is the order by which the browser decides which CSS styles will be displayed. A Best practice in CSS is to style elements while using the lowest degree of specificity so that if an element needs a new style, it's easy to override. IDs are the most specific selector in CSS, followed by classes, and finally tags. All right, that makes sense. Uh, as we learned uh, yesterday, um, IDs pretty much override uh, all the classes. So if you have, a, if you have a, a class designated for a specific tag, if you add an ID to that, that class will be overridden by the ID uh, and the information that's in CSS. All right, for example, consider the following HTML and CSS. So H1 class equals headline breaking news. Okay, so headline. So headline would most likely be over here in the CSS somewhere. Uh, I guess it's not here. Well, this is an example, so it's not there. All right, and then we have this. H1, so that's the tag, and this is a class here. All right, in the example above, <clears throat> uh, code above, the code of the heading would be set to Firebrick. Yes. As the class selector is more specific than a tag, I don't like about my, I've got a new mouse here. Well, it's an old mouse that I just found, but the, uh, Freaking ball is, it's, oh, there it is, it worked a little bit. It doesn't work too well for scrolling. All right, ADD there. As a class selector is more specific than the tag selector. If an ID attribute and selector were added to the code above, the styles within the ID selector body would override all, the styles within ID selector body would override all other styles for the heading. The only way to override an ID is to add another ID with additional styling. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So I keep forgetting this is called a, a class. This is called a selector, if I remember correctly. Over time, as files grow with code, many elements may have IDs, which can make CSS difficult to edit. Since a new, more specific style must be created to change the style of an element. To make styles easy to edit, it's best to style with a tag selector, if possible. If not, add a class selector. If that's not specific enough, then consider using an ID. All right, that makes sense. So, so it's saying basically uh, use tag selectors preferably. If you can't, then we want to use uh, these selectors. And if not, you know, if you want to need to be more specific, I guess you want to use the the ID tag or attribute. All right. In an HTML document, the element on line 11 has an H1 tag, uh, two classes, and an ID. Since the ID is more specific than both, its styles will be applied to the element. Let's rewrite the ID of the element to be less specific by creating classes. Okay, let's see where we're at. So line 11. Boom. So it's H1. It's got an ID of article title. Yep in class of title and uppercase. So article title and 
I know uppercase. Okay. All right. So it needs us. Let's rewrite the ID of this element to be less specific by creating classes. In index.html, I, I delete the ID attribute on the h1 element on line 11. Okay. Well, that's pretty simple. So we're just deleting the ID. So right now it should revert back to this top vacation should revert back to all uppercase. I'm going to go ahead and run. See what happens. It should be all uppercase. Perfect. And that little block lettering. Good. Now delete pound article title ID in the CSS. All right. So since we delete it, we don't need that. Boom. What did I just do? So something. Oops. Wait, did I mess something up? Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. I was a little confused there. All right. Navigate to CSS, delete the article ID, ID selector, and its contents. Okay. All right, that's done. Go ahead and run, which is good. All right, navigate the style.css, add a class selector. So class selectors would be the dot something uh, named cursive. Okay, so so basically it's going to have me probably do a a a, a style a, a class selector for cursive, and I think it was also capitalized as well, if I remember correctly. And so I'll go ahead and do that. So it's a dot cursive. E, and then, and then we want to use font family, family colon space and then cursor. All right, that's good. And then I'm assuming the next one will be um, capitalized, but I'll wait. I won't jump the gun. I just, oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, there we go again. So back to that that uh, semicolon, and then run. So always remember those colons and semicolons. All right, next we got capitalize. Yep, so I already knew that was coming up. We got oh, capitalize, and then text transform. And then it's capitalized. All right, so that should be good to go. Looks everything looks good, perfect. All right, now, and so I'm, I'm assuming what it's going to have me do next is go into HTML and then change it, uh, add those particular classes. So it'll be uh, cursive and capitalized to that. But I should probably read just to make sure. Now navigate back to index.html and replace the uppercase class with cursive and capitalize. Okay. Mm, where are you at? 11, there we go. So I still want to keep it at title because title will make it the color teal. So title will keep it teal. And then we want to add, where are you at? Capitalize. And, and the other one was, what was the other one? Oh, okay, yeah, cursive. Cursive. All right. So that's pretty cool. I like this. This is uh, beginning to understand it a little bit more. All right. So that's that. So that was specificity. So basically, uh, being, I guess, being more specific about um, the particular tags, right? Tags and uh, classes. All right, let's go ahead into the next sheet. All right, next thing we have is chaining selectors. Ooh, I've never heard of this. So this is new to me. All right, chaining selectors. When uh, writing CSS rule, it's possible to require an HTML element to have two or more CSS selectors at the same time. This is done by combining multiple selectors, which we will refer to as chain. For instance, if there was a dot special class for H1 elements, the CSS would look like this. Oh, interesting. 
a dot special class for H1 elements. Okay, the code above would select only the H1 elements that had the class of special. Interesting. Wouldn't that be similar to an ID? But I guess not. Okay, all right, I'm just gonna keep on going. All right. If a P element also had a class of special, the rule and example would not style the paragraph. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Let's use chain ring to select the destination to add a style to them. In style.css, write a CS selector for H2 elements with a class of dot destination inside select the curly brace. Write this. I'm just going to. So let's go ahead and do. To, I'm just going to do that here. So it's just kind of, I'm going to go put it here just to kind of keep all of the uh, these tags together. So let's go h2 dot destination and then curly brace and then side we're going to go plant uh, cursor. Semicolon. All right, just to keep those all the together. All right, make it look nice and neat. Looks good being neat. All right, hopefully this is right. This will make the destinations cursive, like the title of the article. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, how do they know it's how did? Okay, I guess they changed something in the index here. H2. Oh, okay, so they actually added those class descriptions. Okay. Uh, those the class to each one of those. Mm -hmm. So just kind of, you know, obviously there's pros and cons to all of this stuff, but I think it would have been a bit more beneficial to have me go through and input all the classes that way and kind of get a better understanding of, uh, I guess, how this whole, how the function works. And maybe they didn't do that because I've done this already. They're just adding a new twist to it. But I think uh, it would have been better if I would have had to go in there and change them all. All right, so let's go ahead into the next one. Number 13 of thir 13 and 17, nested elements. All right, in addition to changing selectors to select elements, CSS also supports selecting elements that are nested within other HTML elements. For instance, considering the following HTML. So UL, I don't, UL is unordered list and class. So the, the, the items in a UL will have bullet points, whereas items in an OL will have numbers. So ordered list, unordered list. All right. So the nested line elements are selected within the following CSS. So dot main list space li. Hmm. In the example above, dot main list selects the main list element, which is this ul. That's the main list element. the unordered list element, the nested LIs, which are listing uh, the list uh, list items, are selected by adding L1 to the selector, separated by space, resulting in dot main list space LI as a final selector. Note the space in this selector. Select the elements in this way, excuse me, selecting elements in this way can make our L Selectors even more specific by making sure they appear in the context we expect. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm a little con... Maybe I'm not. Maybe I have to do it first. I'm a little confused, but uh, we'll see here. In index.html, each destination has a description paragraph below it. Inside each description, there's a list of attraction. Oh, let's select this one and make it stand out more by making it teal. Okay, let me think about this. Select the style CSS, add a selector, 
It targets all of the H5 elements nested inside the elements in the class description. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming it'll be uh, dot description space H5, and I'm not sure exactly. Oh, it's going to have me do a teal. So teal is um, will be color colon space teal semicolon. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go dot description space H5. I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I'm, you know, I'm not able to wait for some reason. Color or teal. All right, so let's run it. Who run it? <clears throat> All right, inside the curly braces of selector, write color teal. Okay, I got it. So. Ooh, something ain't right. Oh, that's so weird. I accidentally somehow put a comma there. So obviously there's a few bugs here because it it, it told me that it was correct, even though there it was not correct. There was a comma there, not a period. But it did correct it on the next step. So just to clarify for myself what just happened here. So basically on the index.html over here, the H5 elements that have the class of description and only the H5 elements that have the class of description. So there may be, you know, 100 H5 elements, but only two or three have the class of description. So only the ones with description in the H5 element will turn teal. So that should be what happened. I'll go ahead and run it. I already did. And so here we go. So that term, that term teal, that term teal. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. <coughs> Got it. Makes sense. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And Number, this is number 14 of 17. All right, so now we're combining both of those. Chaining and specificity. In the last exercise, instead of selecting all H5 elements, you select only the H5 elements nested within the dot description elements. Actually, I wanna go check that out right quick, just to kind of get a, a visual of what it looks like. That are nested within okay ah that makes sense okay so here's um you all probably got that but uh but here so right now this is a division so basically division separates particular portions of the syntax into containers, right? And so right now, um, this is a division. So this is a container. So from here down to here, this is all one big container. So an invisible box. So all of this information is inside that invisible box and everything, uh, pretty much any classes that are applied to division, you know, are applied to all of those. So. Okay, all right, got it, makes sense. <clears throat> all right, let's go back to reading here. Adding more than one tag. All right, I'm gonna start. In the last exercise, instead of selecting all H5 elements, you select only the H5 elements nested within the description elements. This CSS selector was more specific than writing only H5. Adding more than one tag, class, or ID to a CSS selector increases the specificity of the CSS selector. For instance, consider the following CSS. All right, <clears throat> so looking at that, so basically this is just a, a typical, um, you know, CSS tag, I guess. Um, and this one right here is basically saying um, any paragraph that has main 
in the division section or main in the in its container will have the color red. All right. Both of these CSS rules define what a P element should look like. Since dot main P has a class and a P tag as its selector, only the P elements inside the main element will appear red. This occurs despite <clears throat> there being another more general rule that states P elements should be blue. All right, install set CSS, that's you. Write a selector for H5 elements inside of the curly brace. All right. All right, so basically I'm just gonna do a typical, I'm gonna put that here though. So it's just gonna do a regular uh, H5 element or H5. Oops. And then inside we're gonna put that, which is Rebecca Purple. Never heard of Rebecca Purple. All right. <clears throat> Notice that the H5 element in the description will not change the color. Okay, that's good. It didn't change the color. So just so just for clarification, in H5, this top attraction, I believe, is the H5 element. Yeah, I'm sure it is the H5 element. Okay, this is due to there being a more specific selector for H5 elements that you wrote in the last exercise because of the more specific CSS selector dot description, this one. Perfect. Um, the more general selector of H5 will not take hold. Let's go ahead and run that. Should it all be good? All right, that's good to go. Next one, number 15. All right, important. There's one thing that is even more specific than IDs. What? It just okay. Uh, exclamation important. All right. Exclamation important can be applied to specific attributes instead of full rules. It will override any style, no matter how specific it is. As a result, it should almost never be used. Interesting. It's kind of like a failsafe. Once exclamation important is used, it is very hard to override. The syntax of exclamation important in CSS look like this. All right, so it's just basically added right after the color blue. I got a crook in my neck. All right, since exclamation important is used on the P selector, well, let's say I've got two minutes, 55 seconds left here. Uh, color attribute, all P elements will appear blue, even though there's a more specific dot main P selector that sets the color attribute to red. The exclamation important flag is only useful when an element appears in the same way 100% of the time, since it's almost impossible to guarantee that this will be true throughout a project, and over time it is best, it is best to avoid that altogether. If you ever see exclamation important use, or ever attempted to use it yourself, we strongly recommend reorganizing your CSS, making your CSS more flexible, will typically fix the immediate problem and make your code more maintainable in the long run. That makes sense. So this is exclamation important. It's just, you know, uh, you just do that pretty much if it's the last uh, thing you can think of. But it's best to go through the CSS and reorganize. Add exclamation important to the H5 selector color attribute that you defined in the last exercise. Uh, I should go after Rebecca Purple. So it's just space, exclamation important, boom. Go ahead and press run. All right, so that's pretty much it. So it's basically just saying that from now on, all H5s in this sheet will be Rebecca Purple, which it just turned right there. So no matter what, whether they have an ID, uh, any other type of classes, it's always gonna be Rebecca Purple. All right, in order to make CSS more con concise, it's possible to add CSS styles to multiple CSS selectors all at once. This prevents writing repetitive, co repetitive code. Well, 
For instance, the following code has a credo style attributes. H1, S1, family, Georgia, family, Georgia. Okay. Oh, interesting. So instead of writing font family Georgia twice for two selectors, we can separate the selectors by a comma to apply the same style to both like this. Okay, so it's just basically, uh, okay, that's pretty self-explanatory there. By separating CSS selectors with a comma, both the H1 and the dot menu element will receive the font family Georgia style. All right, pretty self-explanatory. I've right, got 30 seconds here, but we'll both get to see, or we'll all get to see what this timer will sound like, because I've never heard the timer yet. Write the selectors for the H5 and P elements so that they will be styled with the same CSS rule. Let's go ahead and copy that, so I don't have to write that out. So let's go ahead and for P and H5. <laughs> That's awesome. Time to take a break, it says. All right, I got it. And I think what it's going to do, let's move this down a little bit. Oh, so it actually, if I press start, I'll start my break. But I'm going to finish this and then I'll go ahead and take my break. Actually, I'm going to get ready because I have an appointment pretty soon here. All right, write the selectors H5 and P elements. Okay, got it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go um, H5, comma, uh, P, space. And then it wants me to do font, family, and then let's see. Georgia. I think that's correct. It's just off the dome here. Let's make sure that's correct. Boom. All right. So that's cool. So that's pretty cool. So basically, if you have multiple uh, tags that you want to have the same, I guess, attribute, uh, you can just put the tag, comma, whatever, you know, all those tags with commas in between them. And then, uh, whatever that attribute is. All right, that's cool. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. All right, so that was it. So that was learning CSS selectors and visual rules, it says there, setup and selectors. So throughout this lesson, you learn how to select HTML elements with CSS and apply styles to them. Let's review what you've learned. CSS can change the look of an HTML element. In order to do this, CSS must select HTML elements, then apply styles to them. Got it. CSS can select HTML elements by tag, class, or ID. Multiple CSS classes can be applied to one HTML element. Got it. Uh, classes can be reusable while IDs can only be used once. Got it. IDs are more specific than classes. Classes are more specific than tags. And that means IDs will override any styles from a class and classes will override any styles from a tag selector. Unless it's important and important. All right, multiple selectors can be chained together to select an element. This raises the specificity, but can be necessary. So that right there. All right. Nested elements can be selected by separating selectors with a space. Nested element, where is that at? Oh, right here. Boom. The exclamation important flag will override any styles. However, it should else almost never be used as extremely difficult to override. Override. Multiple unrelated selectors can be received. I can receive the same styles with separating selectors now with commas. Great work this lesson. With this knowledge, you're able to use CSS to change the look and feel of websites to make them look great. All right. Feel free to continue when you're ready. So that's pretty much it for this. I'm going to go ahead and click up next and see what happens. Um, in this lesson, you will learn, oh, it's actually going to start a new lesson. So CSS visual rules. So I don't want to start that right now. So I'm going to start that next time uh, when I come back this afternoon or so. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this right here, CSS, as you can see, <coughs> let me get to the middle here. As you can see, um, it, it can be pretty confusing, uh, but um, obviously with practice. What are we talking about? Practice? 
we'll all get the hang of it and uh, it'll be second nature. But thanks for watching, guys. I will uh, uh, talk to you guys in the next video. Again, like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.